Hi folks, today we're gonna talk about SD cards and SD card to USB adapters. We'll be looking for high performance USB to SD card adapters that enable connecting through USB 3.0 and high performance SD cards. We'll be making a number of tests with Crystal Disk Mark for Windows 11 and K Disk Mark for Raspberry Pi OS and other Linuxes to see which kind of combination is to be trusted and how important it is to have a quality SD card as well as as a card to USB 3.0 adapter to be able to successfully install and use a high performance operating system like Windows 11 or Android 16. We'll also be talking about damaged USB to SD card adapters and how to repair them. Many presenters are pricing themselves by installing a new operating system like Windows 11 25 H2 or a test version of Debian 13 to an SSD drive. But many of you still use a humble SD card to install any kind of operating system, especially Raspberry Pi 500 users. Sometimes it's even easier to install an operating system to an SD card than to an SSD drive, especially for Raspberry Pi 500. I've decided to use 128 gigabytes SD cards for my Windows 11 installation. If an SD card is going to be used as a system drive, it has to have enough room not only for the operating system, but also for the various applications that we are going to be using with a computer. 100 and 28 gigabytes is, on my opinion, a reasonable price performance option. However, the data transfer speed for reads and writes is also very important. XC variants of cards may even exceed 100 megabytes per second. However, if you are inserting your SD card into a slot on Raspberry Pi 5 or Raspberry Pi 500, you're gonna be limited to 100 megabytes per second read or write and 50 megabytes per second read or write if you are using Windows 11 even with the newest available UEFI BIOS due to the device driver limitations, except if you are using an SD card to USB 3.0 3.0 adapter, where the only limitation is the speed of USB 3.0 bus, that is about 500 megabytes per second, read or write. I've used two SD cards of different makes that had the same read and write speed, USH1 and V10 markings. Surprisingly, one of the cards outperformed. I've tested it numerous of times and it could even reach about 90 megabytes per second with burst writes, but uh, sparse writes were slow only about 10 megabytes per second and this is why it probably got its rating but the first card was much less capable its burst writes were terribly slow especially if done with more than one thread they got just uh, around 5 megabytes per second which is surprising and alarming at the same time because it actually means that the speed rating for writing may not be very accurate therefore quite significant differences may exist between SD cards of different makes. Unfortunately, these differences also heavily influence user experience with running Windows 11 or similar high-performance operating systems. You may also notice that I don't use PCs to help me. Windows 11 has made a large progress on ARM64 architecture. For example, better program library support now enables using Windows on Raspberry Imager to install Windows on an SSD drive on an SD card. Though many presenters still think that they need a classic PC to install certain operating systems to a Raspberry Pi, it's not needed anymore. It suffices to have another Raspberry Pi 5 or Raspberry Pi 4 with Windows 11 24H2 and an appropriate system tool. But if you are using an SD card instead of an SSD drive, a fast quality SD card is a key to unlock this kind of operating system installations. We also need a special USB adapter to connect a micro SD card or an SD card or EMC drive through a USB port. An adapter has one or more slots for different sized SD cards that were of with frequent use. And it is very important to know that there is no guarantee that an adapter would work after, let's say, two or three years. It all depends on the quality of the contacts that press against the small contacts on an SD card. It is also interesting to know that SD cards are not all of the exactly same thickness. They may vary for a few tens of millimeter. And this is also a problem when we are talking about wear of the contacts in the adapter. So you can feel this when you insert an SD card 
and some of the SD cards fell into the adapter quite easily and you have to push the other a little bit harder. An adapter may develop bad contacts which would cause the installation media created to be faulted. Not due to some kind of a computer virus or uh, some kind of power fluctuations in your computer, but simply because of wear. And this also holds true for the USB pins on the other end of the adapter. There are a number of small adapters without spring-loaded contacts on the USB part. If an SD card doesn't work in a particular adapter, it's good to have another one and to test the same SD card because it's not always as the card at fault it may be the adapter i've got two adapters with my raspberry pis and i bought one now they are all faulty so i had to buy another two which are a little bit more sophisticated they have two slots one for regular sized sd cards and specialized emmc modules and one for micro sd cards i've been surprised to find out that one of the new adapters was not performing to the specification. It had a boot time delay and would not connect when the computer was booting. I don't know what a particular reason was, but they were both of the same make, of the same type, so actually identical. One would work normally and the other would underperform. So it's very important when you buy new hardware to test it, to know whether it's working or maybe you can have it replaced within the warranty period, which is usually one year. I've already talked to my seller and they are happy to replace it. We can take an important lesson from here. It's not only important that a device can perform basic operations like copying files, but it must also do the other more sophisticated operations. Let's start with this patch of tests that were performed on Raspberry Pi 5 with the old C1 chipset with 8GB of RAM. I've used 128GB SD card XCV10. So V10 means that you have at most uh, 10 megabytes of write. But as you can see, if I use sequential read and sequential write, the results are higher because it's easier to perform on the card and I get, uh, because I'm using USB 3.0 to SD card adapter, I'm not having troubles with uh, Windows drivers uh, limitations with this maximum of 50 megabytes per second so I can reach almost 100 megabytes per second. This is sequential read or sequential write of 1 megabyte with 108 gears. This is sequential read of and write of one megabyte with one Q one thread, and this is sequential read of one four K four kilobytes of data. Uh, so, but it's actually this. Uh, this is a small amount of data, and these are sparse reads. So I have thirty two Qs and one thread. So as if thirty two applications would have been accessing this. Uh, SD card at the same time and then I have one Q one thread with four kilobytes so these are the results as you can see let's go briefly here this is a poor performing card on Raspberry Pi 500 just to remind you that this value this is the processor speed and actually the amount of RAM does not very much influence the performance of Windows because Windows is quite happy with four gigabytes of RAM and this test can easily run. So as you can see here we are limited to maximum of 50 megabytes so we got read speed about 45 megabytes and here it's comparable but this is terrible bad result because there seems to be something wrong with this card because it's very slow at writes but sometimes it does manage to, to work faster so these results are not stable as if you look at another card on the same computer Raspberry Pi 500 with 8 gigabytes of RAM we can see that these results are stable reads are a little bit faster but writes are also fast, stable and faster so this result is stable uh, if we go to the next patch of results here, uh, here we go. So we can see that if we use Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM, it doesn't really matter whether it's running on 3 gigahertz or no. But uh, if you are using 128 gigabytes SD card, 
also with uh, with 10 marking so the same card as previously and we use USB 2.0 to SD card adapter then actually the card is going to perform slower due to limitation of the bus so we have at most around 30 megabytes per second due to USB 2.0 bus and USB 2.0 adapter so this is much slower but what is also interesting is that if you are using a bad SD card then we also get this stochastic result that uh, is not very good at writes and the consequence is that Windows is starting more slowly and so on and it's also when you are actually using uh, certain kind of applications you may experience uh, actually uh, some uh, poor performance. So here we are back to Raspberry Pi 5 with C1 system on chip with the old system on chip. We are using SD card socket or USB 3.0 to SD card socket adapter with this SD card that I've used with this Raspberry Pi. You can see much better results uh, for reads and for writes. Uh, but you have to take into account that Raspberry Pi OS does not have a limitation. Uh, the driver here works well, so we can see the same results for SD card or for SD USB 3.0 adapter. These are only results from one test, just to show approximate values. Uh, there were much more tests performed. So uh, here are the comparison results. If, if you want to see how uh, Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM performs with uh, 256 gigabyte SSD drive on PCIe with one lane bus generation 2. So if I had generation 3 these numbers would have probably been um, almost doubled. So, But you can see that it's much much faster but around 100 megabytes per second as you've seen before uh, it's relatively good speed even to run Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi. So let's go briefly to this set of results. This is These are also made with Raspberry Pi with 16 gigabytes of RAM running at 3 gigahertz. As we can see I've used another SD card with 64 gigabytes of RAM. It's also with N class 1 but what we can see here is that actually the reads are faster, writes are comparably fast, but the limitation is USB 2.0 bus again. So uh, this is it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press like and subscribe buttons and don't forget about the notification bell. See you in the next video. Bye.